Hey everybody, how do? Welcome to Thursday night. It is good to see you and it is good to be seen by you. I'm sorry for the late start tonight. Sometimes, you know, stuff just comes up, but of course, I am Bill Sylvie, aka the Dungeon Delver, and welcome to the show, everyone. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching, and uh, we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to dig into uh some more of uh some some more of the um module l1 the secret of bone hill we've we've been talking about that one for a while now i know it's a favorite for a lot of you guys i never played this one as extensively as i've played other modules like i have lived in the keep on the borderlands okay i can tell you all about the people there i can tell you the dangers of the countryside the ter lay of the terrain the contents of the caves of chaos um a little less the village of hamlet not quite so much against the cult of the reptile god this one is is uh new ish to me i've always had access to it and i've always read it and i've always looked at it and enjoyed it but it's never one that i have fully like experienced and gotten into and we've we we've talked about this we've gotten through the encounter tables some and uh you know we we've we've talked about uh some of the stuff here but we're gonna we're, we're fissing to get into it we're fissing to get into it ryan david good to see you i'm glad you could make it at least for a little bit uh Wenger, mercury wells robert phillips death angels shadow uh timothy m holt Run the module. Well, you know, maybe it may happen, Tim. It may happen. Speaking of running modules, I have got something so cool coming in 2024. Guys, it is arguably going to be one of the most boss things I have ever done on the show. But I can't tell you yet what it is. I can't tell you yet what it is what what exactly is going to happen um but when i contacted somebody about it and they agreed uh to to engage with it i was just over the moon it's gonna be so neat yeah coming in 2024 there's still plenty of 2024 in front of us uh you know what north of the rockies is right i need a hat what what no wonder i feel out of sorts just a minute guys and i will get a hat here hold on a second listen D, D youtubers fellow tabletop rpg streamers we live in a very open uh field um there is room enough for all of us so I do not feel as though I am in competition with the dungeon minister, with anyone at all. But I'm going to tell you something. I, this is my free advice to you. Get a hat. Get a hat. All right? That's, there you go. Tim, I know you do YouTube videos. Ryan, you guys over there, get, get a hat. Doesn't have to be a wizard's hat. Just, just get a hat. Anyway, um, your parents went to Bone Hill and all you got was a stupid existence. Orbital air, greetings. But anyway, um, I don't know if Timothy wanted me to just like bust out and start running the module right now, but anyhow. Um, so we got to this point, and it's been long enough. It has been long enough that I actually, I'm not 100% sure of where we were because, you know, I've rebooted this PC and I've scrolled up and down through the module and take notes. Ha, 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 ha. I am not organized, guys. Um, speaking of organization... Uh, two things, one's fun and one's not so fun. Uh, the fun thing is 
I am rapidly coming to a decision on when the great underground online gaming convention is going to happen. Uh, yes, it does. Vinger, thank you very much for the super. Let's just pin that right. Where is my mouse? There it is. Let's just pin that right up there. Thank you. Thank you, Vinger, for the super. Um, but I'm going to tell you, uh, the great underground online gaming convention is coming this spring. Uh, I will let you guys know um, when it is. We are going to register through Warhorn. Dot net. Don't go look now. If you go look for the guac, you will find last year's and you will be confused because you'll see a bunch of games in there. But uh, we, you know, I'm going to set it up so you guys can come in, register, play your games at the times you want to play your games. And it's all online, but we have merch. Guys, we're going to have Artist Alley and guests. We're going to have guests of honor. And this year's guests of honor, I'm just announcing this right now. This is not the, the big thing, by the way. It's still awesome and equally big. But but our guests who are going to be at the Guac this year are going to be Heidi Gygax and Eric Garland of Gaxland. We've talked to them on stream before, but hopefully they're going to run some stuff or live stream or both. Timothy, you want to be here for that. Ryan, you want to be here for that. Local Gumby, Death Angels, Hypercam, Vinger, all you guys want to be here for that. You don't want to miss uh, that chance. Savo, hello, good to see you. Um, by the way, if you're not on Twitter, and for purposes of TTRPGs, I'm just going to say you should be on Twitter. Um Give uh, Savo a follow under uh, Fifle the Twit at Fifle the Twit. That's all one word: F I F L E the Twit. Um, Savo is making absolutely amazing web comics right now, and deserves all your attention. Um, yes, local Gumby. I will not. Uh, I, I I will not uh, forbid you that. Now, if I ever get to ten thousand subs. Spoiler alert, I'm not. Um, we will have a, a guac, the great underground overland gaming convention, an in real life guac event. Jorge, greetings. Good to see you, brother. Um, but we'll have an in real life convention. You can't smoke at that one inside. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna burst your bubble and let you know. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, get yourself over to Twitter, follow Fifle the Twit, uh, the, the Fifle, uh, web comic is fun and the art is amazing. And I liked the Gothic font, th uh, just the same very much. People talk to you off that ledge Fifle, but I liked the Gothic font. I did, but you know, whatever. Um, so that's the good thing. That's the positive thing. Uh, the date of the guac approaches, that is the date I announce it and the date it's actually going to be. Uh, the not fun thing is I have gotten a few comments under my video talking about the Tencent Hasbro negotiations about the D&D IP. People saying, well, you're going to have to retract this now. Hasbro said that that's not happening. They're just talking about video games. Because Hasbro is a completely trustworthy organization, absolutely 110% given to telling you nothing but the unfettered truth and reality as it best benefits you. Does, does nobody here remember, um, you know, uh, what, what was it? Um, oh, we were never going to release OGL 2.0. That was a leak. That wasn't going to happen. We're never going to restrict creative people. This won't affect anyone. Does anybody remember those statements? Because they were a little bit more than a year ago. Okay. If I can help lift it, the beard is going to get Timothy. I My second channel, 
which if you're not subscribed to my second channel, videos are coming soon. Um, I would sell Hogger to a slayer such as you north of the Rockies. Um, Timothy, my second channel is um, it, uh, the uh, 3D printing garage. My first video is going to be on this on safely working around resin. This has got to go because a respirator will not form a bond with my nose and mouth with this. It won't. And no, I'm not going to do a toothbrush toothbrush mustache. So don't ask. Um. Th this this will have to go. This, this will have to go. So uh, the point is, anyone waiting for me to issue an apology um, or a retraction, because Hasbro said you will be waiting a long time. Now, I'm going to do a video tomorrow about what Hasbro said. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Hasbro will sell Dungeons and Dragons to someone. It's going to, and I don't mean ev like eventually, like in 130 years, my, my revenant will rise up and say, I told you so, and then crumble into dust. Imperial ramblings. There's a guy. It's my sound guy right there. I still need to get that other mic from you one of these days, brother. Hey, maybe at the next Alabama game meetup, right? But anyway. Um, but there, uh, there's going to come a day, I think probably before the decade's out, when Dungeons & Dragons is completely in somebody else's hands. Jack Neller. What is happening? Jack Neller. Roll damn tight, IR. Maybe it won't be Tencent. I'm not saying it will be Tencent. I'm saying that they have probably approached Tencent. And no, it was not just video game rights. Hasbro is in financial trouble. Anything they can do to bring the red down and the black up will fit them. And Dungeons and Dragons is the only thing they've got that's doing well enough to flush them with cash to buoy up the rest of the company. They have cut 20% of their workforce. Their stock keeps dropping. They got rid of their movie studio deal. And um, thank you again, Vinger. Vote for that Bill Silvey Revenant poster. Somebody would have to do it. Somebody would have to make the art. I, I couldn't do it. Oh, Sabo, I want to answer this. I want to answer this. Because we've talked about Tomb of Horse. That's all that that's also but but uh let me tell you what. Go listen to Ryan David talk. Uh there, there's is it one or two live streams back uh when you talk about um Hasbro selling off their movie theater stuff or their 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 movie uh deal stuff, Ryan. Let me know and I will let the people know. Okay, so um the gem surrounded by the bones in the Tomb of Horrors. There is a gemstone uh, that is surrounded by blasted, blackened bones. Skeletons, ruined magic items, melted armor. It is a gem that radiates evil and wish if you cast Detect Magic on it. It radiates evil. It is so strong that if detect magic is cast on it or detect evil is cast on it, I don't remember. Even people who haven't cast the spell aren't magical. You know, the fighters in the party, the thief in the party will see the thing flash 
lurid purple and orange. Yeah, me too. And we are their cash flow problem, Ryan. Um, the gem literally stops just short of holding up a sign that says, touch me and you're boned. If the gem is picked up, the person who picks it up will sense that it has strong wish magic on it. If you wish on that gem after, I can't remember if it's 10 or 30 seconds, first of all, the wish is perverted 100%. It is what people think that first edition AD&D Dungeon Masters used to do, and we don't, okay? The gem, like... I wish that uh, that Bobby the, the the barbarian was alive. He d he died back at the entrance. He fell into a pit. I wish he was alive. The gem will raise him up as like a triple strength, uh, you know, um, wraith or something like that. I wish I had a million gold pieces. A million gold pieces fall from the uh, the sky and crush you to death. Then the gem explodes in flames and radiation. Everything in a radius of, I believe, 30 feet is utterly and completely destroyed. No saving throw, no saving throw for the equipment, nothing. You are blasted at it. It is like a chunk of Chernobylite right after the explosion. The gem itself is destroyed. It, 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 it just boils away into a pool of disgusting, foul mold and mildew on the floor. It bubbles and chuckles for a week and then reforms into the gem. What you find... When you go into the tomb and encounter it, are the obvious remains. There should be no calculus in your experience as an AD&D player that should tell you to touch or pick up that gem. I can honestly say I have never had a party die by that gem in the in the few times I've run the Tomb of Horrors. They see the they see the skeletons, they see the blasted scorch marks on the wall. They I show them the illustration with like a finger pointing at it. I have had some parties cast detect magic and detect evil on it before and they avoid it. They do not touch it at all. It's lime local gumby. It's it's lime flavored. So that is what that gem does. Do do I do I detect a potential future Fifel comic about that gem? I mean, I would say as long as you don't wish on it, picking it up is fine. Like handling it is fine. It's only when you invoke a wish. It's only when you invoke a, 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 a wish that things will rapidly go south. The Tomb of Horrors says the Tomb of Horrors on the tin. Now, I have said this before about that module, and I promise we're going to get into Bone Hill, which is like on the opposite end of the spectrum. But I have said this about that module before. And I hold this to be true. Give me a group of experienced players, very experienced players. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not talking about characters. I'm talking about players. Oh, that's a good one, uh, Rockies. 
everybody has one seventh level character, they can make it through the Tomb of Horrors. They can make it all the way through the Tomb of Horrors with appropriate magic items. Maybe make sure the cleric has a scroll with a couple of uh, raised deads or a rod of resurrection with a few charges on it. Now I'd go with the rod. Give him a rod of resurrection with like 15 charges on it. Well, no, because it takes multiple charges. Call it like 30 charges. Slender Dad. <laughs> Slender Dad is my kind of scum, ruthless and inventive. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> um, Timothy M. Holt wants to know how long a Kendra would live in the tomb. As long as it took me to physically carry him to the great green devil face and throw it in. What I, I survived the Tomb of Horrors and all I got was cursed by a Sarerak. Uh But anyway, so uh, yeah, I can take a group of say six to eight experienced players. Seventh level characters each. Make sure they've got enough healing magic because there is some no, sta no save damage stuff in there. And they are going to survive the Tomb of Horrors with minimum casualties. I can take a table of eight to ten non-experienced players and give each of them two 10th level characters they won't make it past the magic missile maze. The lot of them will be dead. It is a module for testing play acumen. Oh, I like that one, Rocky's buying this t-shirt is one terrific demolage. Oh, Lux, that's evil. Wish on the stone for all Kendra to never be sad again, and then just throw the stone as far away as you can. <laughs> that's evil. I love it. Would the crew of the USS... Yes, absolutely. The crew of the USS Enterprise would survive the Tomb of Horrors. Uh, they would use phasers on destroy to get through the walls. Um... Spock would mind meld with a Sararak skull. And uh, Kirk would, uh, using a phaser and destroy, Kirk would destroy it. No, I think Spock would intuit out that the gems are the only thing that could crush the skull. And Kirk would qu quickly fashion a cannon out of, uh, what was it, Savo, charcoal, saltpeter, uh, <laughs> and what else? A slender dead. I wish this. No, 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 no. Wish that the stone would blow up. I wish this stone would explode. I did. I did a print run of uh, Green Devil Face miniatures once upon a time, and sold a bunch of them. That is 28 millimeter scale, great devil face. I may do them again someday. I, I printed them and I painted them. Thank you, Sabo. Charcoal, charcoal, saltpeter, sulfur. Oh, I, there is somebody absolutely, um, uh, the, there's the siren, the the siren that a Sarerak trapped. Do 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 do. Spock, I'm in love. Oops. 
No, 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 no. The stone does the opposite. I wish this rock was not teleported inside a Sararak skull, wherever it is. Yes, the Tomb of Horrors actually already was done on Star Trek, and it was called Cat's Paw. That's right. Silly question, can monks grapple in AD&D? Yes, they can. Can they slam grappled opponents into the environment for damage? Uh, I mean, yeah, anybody can engage in grapple in AD&D, and it's not that hard. We, we, we have done a le uh, Let's Learn AD&D, and we've covered unarmed combat. It isn't that difficult. The only problem with it is it is convoluted because it's opponent size, opponent's armor class, opponent's dex, opponent's strength, uh, attacker's size, attacker's armor class, attacker's dex, attacker's strength, uh, then a percentile dice roll, and then consult a chart. Please save that joke, Savo, for, for Fifel to tell. Please, if you do a Tomb of Horrors strip, please, please, please give that dialogue to Fifel. That That is... Slender Dad, don't use Thaco. Use the charts. Use the tables. We talked about this last night. You guys are making me late. It's going to, like... It's going to be midnight before I get to L1 at this rate. But use the charts in the Dungeon Master's Guide. That is the way you do it. Look, 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 look. You don't have to use two-hit armor class zero. You don't have to. There, there are these wonderful tables. All you need to do is glance at them. No math required. I was told there'd be no math. Well, guess what? There isn't. There isn't a lick of math required. Oh, I wish I could tell you guys the awesome stuff that I've got coming. Look, look at these tables. That's all you need. Attack matrix for fighters, paladins, rangers, bards, and level zero halflings and humans. Attack matrix for thieves and assassin. Attack matrix for clerics, druids, monks. Attack matrix for magic users and illusionists. And attack matrix for monsters up to 16 plus hit dice. Don't use Thaco. You're right. Thaco's dumb. Thaco doesn't count for repeating 20s. The table does. Thaco doesn't make -o any sense. Yeah, I know you were, Tim. Tim's got a slide rule out. I'm ready. My body is ready. Tell me. <laughs> No, 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 no. We have tables. We just have tables to look up. I mean, Gary was an actuary for Fireman's Fund before he 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 uh, created D and D guys. So trust me. Extremist content, absolutely. Charts are the pinnacle. I have no doubt you do on a slide roll. The most glorious day ever was when I figured out that I could that I was allowed to take my color graphing calculator into college algebra exams with me because hey, you have to have a graphing calculator for college algebra. And that TI on their website helpfully has TI graphing calculator basic programs <laughs> that will solve any formula. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what a tinker gnome is so i couldn't tell you uh the apparatus of qualish is held together with magic do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart then you're a heretic and you will be purged Yes. Although I did memorize the quadratic equation. I did memorize the quadratic equation. I have since forgotten it, but I did memorize the quadratic equation. P. 
PEMDAS. Anyway, we're going to stop talking about math. We're going to talk about L1, The Secret of Bone Hill. So last week, we got up to... Last week. <laughs> good Lord. Last time, uh, we got up to page 7. And by the way, uh, next week on this uh, on this live stream, we have the awesome Laura Daniel will be here. Madame DM from over on Twitter. I'm just so happy. She is a voice actress, uh, an actress, actress, and I'm elated that she's going to be on the show. So that's that's going to be a lot of fun. That's what we're doing next week. So we we got to get a move on, guys. We get we got to get a move on. Okay, so let's look at this. W last time. We talked about Guardian Peak, Lark Hill, High Top, Low Point, and Ready Forest. I am DM, it, DM hear me roar. Oh, that's Helen Ready Forest. Ew. Thank you for telling me that, Damien. Okay, so... Uh, we talked. We we talked about the roster details and whatnot. And now on to what we all came here for: Bony Hill and the Dead Forest. I had so much fun when we did the the late Janelle Jacques um, Dark Tower module, because the the bad guys are the cult of Set. And every time I would say, the gleam in the eye of Set. I'm going to have all that information up, Michael, later. Uh, but anyway, the gleam in the eye of Bone Hill and the Dead Forest. Hey, if you like that nostalgia, buy me a coffee or drop me a super, Slender Dad. I do this five nights a week. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And by the way, if you aren't, please do click the subscribe button. Click the bell icon for notifications, if you would. And remember, tonight's live stream is brought to you by our friends at Hellabard Games. Hellabard makes the kind of adventures they'd like to play, whether it's for the OSR or 5th edition, Old School is in play at the table with Hellebard Games, and you can find them on DriveThruRPG or on their website, hellebardgames.com. They are linked down below. So let's get to it. Bone Hill and the Dead Forest. You are the dead. The hill rises to a height of over 1,400 feet. Atop it are the remains of a ruined castle, which can be seen by those of keen eye. The hill itself is rocky and boulders large enough to conceal a mounted knight occur frequently every 800 to 1,500 feet with, large, with other large formations within 2,500 feet of the ruin. The area around the ruin is level, with large rocks and boulders deliberately removed. The hill has wild grasses and shrubs growing about its base, but the but near the fourteen or the twelve hundred foot mark and higher, there is virtually no vegetation. This is unusual, as the hill should abound with plant life. Within three thousand feet of the ruin, there are no large bushes and no plant cover. A ranger or druid might note that the land has been cleared often and regularly, but the forest is typical of the area with respect to plant life. Bushes are abundant, and trails and natural passages are few. However. No animal life is seen. See below. The dead forest of Sit. You know, I don't have to have this over here. I can... Let's see. I'm going to cover me up. And how am I going to do this? Somebody's been messing with my, with, with my carts. Come on. Bring this over here. There we go. All right. Oh, Slender Dad, thank you very much. Five bucks. That's hell. That's a that's a coffee and a scone. Alan Canning. Good to see you, my friend. It's good to see everyone, of course. Because we got 32 of you guys in live chat, and that's awesome. Okay. 
uh, inhabitants. The hill slash ruin are is the hill slash ruin is occupied by a sim, uh, symbiosis, though not all the partners are alive. During the day, the ruins upper level is guarded by a band of bugbears, six adult males, five adult females, and nine young, supported by an evil magician. Two of the bugbears are shamans. At night, the ruin is run by the undead, a wraith, a zombie, a skelet. <laughs> I think we have some typos here in the PDF. A wraith, a zombie, a skeleton, eight zombies, and 12 skeletons. Uh, oh, no. The zombier and skeleton are defined below. Okay. My mistake. Um, a wizard Bill actually prefers uh, beers and wine when it comes to it. Beers, wines, and ciders. I don't, I don't much do coffee. If I absolutely need a jolt, a rush in the morning to get going, I'll grab a Coke, but I am trying to really cut that out of my diet completely. I I haven't, my, my darling wife got me a Mexico Coke for uh, my birthday and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Where did my, let's see, I accidentally dropped that off. Okay, there we go. Uh, but other than that, I hadn't had one since December. Big men drink stout. Absolutely. I want it resized and came back over here. So let, let's continue. Good for you, Slender Dad. Other monsters exist in the lower ruin levels, but since they are not mobile and never venture outside, they will be discussed as they are encountered. In the forest, normal small mammals and birds are not to be seen. Insect life, though, is very widespread, including such creatures as wasps, flies, bees, and locusts. There's a 15% chance of encountering one to two normal-sized poisonous vipers. Finally, strange forms of undead may be encountered. There's a one in six chance per turn of an encounter from the following table. Roll 1d6 for exact result. Um, normal skeletons, animal skeletons, or ghoul sturges. M list, uh, layer of major inhabitants. Apple cider vinegar is delicious, so I hope the studies are correct. Um, layer of major inhabitants. The ruin, as shown on the map of the above ground levels, is the home for the bugbears, magic user, and undead. The forest has no actual layers, but there is a strong likelihood of encountering wandering monsters. Again, see below. Encounter probability. The hill below 1,200 feet of elevation, no closer than 2,500 feet to the ruin. There's a one in six chance uh, of an encounter. Check every half mile traveled by the party. Uh, this encounter will either be a lone skeleton, 60%, or a zombie, 40%, lurking behind a boulder. These encounters are not part of the ruin population. Within 2,500 feet of the ruin, the chances of a dangerous encounter increase as modified by the time of day. In daytime, there's a 1 in 10 chance. Check each turn of meeting a lone bugbear going to the ruin. He is not part of the ruin population, but is seeking employment. He only knows that some of his fellows work here. He does not know how many are here, who runs a complex, or of the presence of the undead. At night, there's a 1 in 4 chance of an encounter. Uh, check each turn. The following table should be used to determine the creatures encountered whenever an encounter is indicated. Uh, giant wasps, giant scorpions, giant centipedes, poisonous vipers, and ghoul sturges. Poisonous vipers, uh, they have no treasure. Ghoul sturges. Um, on the first successful hit, the ghoul sturge does one to four points of damage and paralyzes the victims unless a save versus paralyzation is made. Every round thereafter, the ghoul sturge does one to six points of damage automatically through blood drain. When the ghoul sturge is drained 12 points, uh, it detaches from the victim and flies away to digest its meal. The ghoul sturges are 70% likely to guard nearby treasure on the body of a former victim. The treasure will contain six to 60 gold, eight to 80 electric 
spectrum and is 40% likely to also contain either a miscellaneous potion or scroll with one to four first and second level cleric or spells. Wow. Okay. So for levels two to four, those could be a TPK. Those could absolutely be a TPK because they don't just hit you and drain. They hit you. They paralyze you and drain. One to four ghoul surges. Let's say it's four. You've got a party of mixed, say, five or six second or third level characters. You are basically not going to save versus paralysis. You have about a 15% uh, chance if somebody wants to look up the tables. And you're going to take a D6 damage. Magic users are dead on arrival. TPK, total party kill. Every member of the party dies and the players have to roll up new characters. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't, Slender Dad. This is, yeah, immobilization is always fatal. So unless somebody's rocking a ring of free action or something. We've got to get Savo in a game here. I will gift you a game session one of these nights, Savo. Oh, yeah. If you have bugs biting you, uh, if you have creatures, rather, biting you for attack, um, then you absolutely uh, should be checking for disease as a DM. Yeah, a Dubro wizard with max con at second level would have 10 hit points. So anyway, ghoul sturges, bad juju, animal skeletons, um, one four hit points, one attack damage, one to two, not too bad. Will be of small mammals such as hares, squirrels, opossums, rats, foxes. As with normal skeletons, these undead will attack until destroyed or turned. They have no treasure. So they have a half a hit die. So I would say even for, like, I, I would say a first level cleric turns them on like, I wouldn't treat them as like turns them on like a five or better on a D20. Jalopy, they're kind of are, but it varies module to module. It varies module to module. Like in S4, there are swarms of normal bats that can absolutely do a party in. Not through attacks, just by effectively suffocating them with small nicks and wounds. A level two magic user with a con of 16 is going to have D4, which max is going to be four. D4 for second, also four. That's eight. And then plus two for each die, which of course is four, which is 12. I'm sorry. I told you guys to be careful of math. Uh, so every creature under these ruins hates and fears living beings and thus will jealously guard their treasure troves and seek to destroy any intruders. The Wraith was once a, once a mighty evil warlord who now acts in concert with the magic user to further its own hate-filled purposes. <clears throat> Likewise, the Skelter and the Zombier, who, <laughs> that's going to be tough, who roam this site, detailed below, are unique beings once utterly evil henchmen of the Wraith, but then physically destroyed and cursed with undead forms, sustained by the power of the evil of this ancient and diabolical spot. The Ruin. Telvar, human magic user, chaotic evil, 6th level, 18 hit points. He wears a cloak of protection plus two and is armed with a dagger and a wand of fear with five charges. He knows the following spells. Detect magic, magic missile, protection from good, sleep, darkness, 15 foot radius, invisibility, fireball, protection from normal missiles. We're going to find out. If possible, Telvar will... Uh, uh, will activate both protection spells prior to encounter. His spell book is kept in room whoa, of the ruin. And then we have the bugbear shamans. Now, folks, we have talked before about this. And I just, man, I, I sounded like a disappointed softball coach. We have talked before about this, ladies. Um, but no. Guys, dungeon masters, you should absolutely be using tribal spellcaster rules. You know, oh, it's just one hill giant. There's eight of us. We're all fifth level. 
He's a witch doctor. So guess what? He's casting spells as you guys are moving in. And people have the temerity to say, people have the temerity to say that classic D&D ain't cool like that. It is cool like that. Anyway, so the bugbear shamans have some spells. Uh, cure light wounds, a couple of those. Cause fear, augury silence. Your magic user, shut your mouth. Cause fear, cure light wounds, protection from good, resist fire, silence 15 foot radius. And they both have split mail plus one. You live to guard your treasure. Do I roll my hit dice as a monster uh, on the monster chart? Yes, you would. Actually, you, like me, uh, you're a commoner, so you have one to six hit points, or one d4 plus one. Maybe two to five. I'll have to go back and look. Am I still here? Okay, I'm still there. I accidentally bumped my stream yard. Uh, uh, stream box, rather. All right, uh, so where were we? Lost my PDF again. An uncommoner, I like that too. All right, so here we go. Um, we have the female bugbears, the adult bugbears, the wraith who should send everybody running for the hills. Run to Bone Hills! Run for your life! Sorry. Let's talk about the Zombire. It's not slow like a zombie, but might pretend to be so in order to deceive. Uh, he's immune to sleep hold charm. Um, It carries 20 platinum and a potion of fire resistance. It doesn't say anything about vampire-like effects. I do wonder why this didn't make it into Monster Manual 2. I do wonder why... <laughs> Both of a maiden fan and dog owner. Ouch. I, I do wonder why they called it a zombier, but whatever. Like, I uh, honestly, I mean, I don't know, guys. What I'd say Juju Zombie, but Juju Zombies have like an insane hit dice. It's like three plus 12. So, like a minimum of 15 hit points. Now, well, this thing has 18. Six flags over Lendor. I love it, Robert Phillips. It didn't make... <laughs> Two dollars to not sing like that again. Oh, you'll need to send me a lot more money to, than, than that to get me to not sing. I, I, don't, I don't think your bank account can sustain that. Hey, Ricky, thank you so much. Thank you. I love it. I'm busking tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super, Ricky. I really appreciate it, bro. Ricky, I have something so cool coming up, man. Something so, so damn cool. All right. Uh, so let's talk about the Skelter. Yeah, it's an elder zombie or, I don't know, a zombie with a plus symbol next to it. How much? Uh, I don't know. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. If, 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 you, if you want me, if, if you want Christopher Walken singing, just listen to your heart. Um. So it is turned per whites 
Uh, like the zombie, there's a reanimated skeleton of a once very evil low-level magic user. It's immune to the same attack forms listed for the zombie and can cast shield and sleep. Shield and sleep. I don't know. I kind of like Skelter for that. I, I I could populate a dungeon with those. Oh, they're just skeletons. Vom. Power of Christ compels you. They're not leaving. Oh, crap. Worst musical comedy mashup ever. Taylor Dane Cook. Observation from the Rowan. Whenever a party approaches the ruin, there is a chance they will be spotted by a watchful guard. The table below gives the percentage chance of a party being spotted if it approaches within 2,500 feet of any given location, modified by day or night conditions. If the party spotted, the alarm will be raised in their ruin within two to eight turns, after which time surprising its inhabitants will be impossible. Note if the party takes precautionary evasive action as it proceeds, darting from concealment to concealment, hiding behind cover as it advances, etc., then the chances of being observed are modified by 20% in the party party's favor. And night using bright lights such as torches guarantees the party being observed. And then there's our table. I smote his ruin upon the mountainside. By the way, reading Lord of the Rings now, uh, I am into Return of the King. Um, I'm hyped. I love Return of the King. And so the encounter key to Bone Hill. So question for you guys. Do you, do you guys want a quick look at the map and then come back and go through this? Because skipping, like constantly skipping between is just going to get tedious. So do you want the encounter areas and then we'll go look at the map or go look at the map and then come back and do the encounter areas? Uh, same here, Ricky. It's just taken me a long time. I started it back in October. Well, we're going to look at the map, but first or after. Stop saying it. First or last, guys. First or last. While you guys are deciding, as you guys are, as we are waiting, you guys talking about, um, uh, John Lennon and Helter Skelter. Uh, that song came about when McCartney was talking to um, Pete Townsend of The Who. And I can't remember what song it was, but McCartney had basically been in the room for them recording a song. And... Uh, Either Townsend or Daltrey was like, "That's the loudest music ever. That's that's loud and it, it's it's really intense." And so he went back and challenged the Beatles to do something as loud and as heavy for the White Album sessions. When Ringo screams, "I've got blisters on my fingers!" at the end, he really did. They did take after take after take after take, and he played the drums till his hands were bleeding. So the Beatles basically invented heavy metal. Queen invented speed metal with the song Sheer Heart Attack. Not the album Sheer Heart Attack, but the song Sheer Heart Attack. But the Beatles basically invented heavy metal with a white album. Anyway. Map first. Okay. Map first. Somebody finally said map first. Okay. So we're going to go. We're going to look at the... Uh, uh, so that's Restonford Castle. That's not what we want. Where is it? Uh, I'm looking here, guys. Map, map, map. Let's see. 
Key to the dungeon level. Again, a bone hill. Ah, there we go. So here we go. Bone Hill Castle, the ruins. So you can see this is a good TSR. Now, th this is nice because, guys, even at, like if at the end of this you're like, I don't like this module. First of all, what's wrong with you? But second of all, modules are awesome because of maps. I'll buy your crap module just to steal the maps from to use in my D&D &D game so I don't have to map. But this is the Bone Hill Castle Ruins. Get a good look at it. And then we, of course, you know, we, we have a, a good old organic dungeon area underneath. I don't know. I, I think birthday is a little too goofy. I, I get it. I, I, I get it. Dyson Logos has nice maps. You can drop your own. But what I'm saying is, is if you want to grab something real quick, grab a module off your shelf you're never going to run otherwise. All right. So here we go. Do you guys get a good look? You feel like you 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 got a you got a feel for it there? Okay, encounter key to Bone Hill. This tower has three levels and a roof. A huge 10 by 12 hole is at the ground level on the northwest face. The outer walls are quite securely quite secure structurally, only a very severe blow would cause any further opening in the breach. There is virtually no chance the tower would collapse. The inside structure, however, including the roof, is very old and rotted. The staircases are made of stone and built into the wall and will not collapse unless the wall caves in. Each 10 by 10 section of the floor and roof can support up to 100 pounds of weight safely. Each three pounds of additional weight means a 1% chance of causing the flooring or roof to collapse, taking along any floors below it as it falls. A fallen character takes 2d6 points of damage per level fallen with a 70% chance of the character being hit by one to four large stones for one to six additional points of damage each. Ouch. Once collapse begins, a character can attempt to jump up to a staircase. This jump has a 6% chance per point of dexterity over nine of succeeding. Those characters on a staircase when a floor above falls in have a 60% chance of being hit by one to four stones. Items carried that are not in packs or belt pouches must make a saving throw versus normal blow for every seven points of damage taken by the owning player. Wow. Wow. <laughs> or hey, I, I understood that. And local Gumby thinks that damage is too low. Remember, man, this is a second or fourth level module, and the party may have already had to deal with, with ghoul uh, sturges. Local Gumby's like, kill the bastards. Yes, it is, Savo. Yes, it is. In the floor of the second level, there's a secret compartment which can be found by inspection from above unless this floor collapses, in which case 3 to 30 gold pieces will rain down amid the rubble. Investigation will reveal the balance of 250 gold still in the intact floor sections, along with a pouch containing her... <laughs> That's classic ad and &D. There's a ring of feather falling in there. Oh, my God. I, Gumby, my, my, my dad, over the years working in construction here in Central Florida, uh, witnessed two accidents that involve falls of less than 10 feet, both of which led to the decease of the individuals, unfortunately. 
If you live in a single story house, go outside and look at the edge of your roof and consider how low that really is. If you're a guy like me, if you're like six feet or above, that's you can probably reach up and put your hands at least on the tops of the gutters. My dad saw a guy stumble off of something like that. He didn't land on his neck. He was at the top, the, the, the peak of the roof, started stumbling, tried to get his feet under him, got to the edge, fell off. That was it. That answers some questions, Ricky. Okay, B is a collapsed wall. You guys saw saw that on the map. Uh, this is a section of collapsed wall. Among the rubble are a number of nearly spherical rocks, roughly one feet in diameter, with some split into fragments. A catapult once hurled these at the wall. A lone bugbear will be on guard here 70% of the time. In the rubble is a skeleton not part of the roster. It will attack anything that crosses the rubble except a bugbear. The skeleton is the remains of one of the four bodies here, none of which has any treasure. The skeleton is on guard both day and night. It can be noted that the animated skeleton is a bugbear while the other bones are of Elves. Worst ever happened to me on construction working with my old man was I grabbed 110. Running a screw gun, standing in a puddle, lost power, walked over, braced myself on a metal stud wall while I reached down and picked up the plug. Burt. It, it, it was just a little sting, and my hand ended up with, uh, with, you know, it was just numb for the rest of the day. All right, so courtyard. This is the heart of the courtyard. An 80-foot diameter circle of burnt remains left from a fireball can be seen. Within this circle are seven skeletons, four humans, and three bugbears. None of them are animated. Uh, from one to four undead might be on patrol here at night. They will be mixed types from the roster. The old guard tower is not used by the bugbears, but there is a 70% chance of a uh, skeleton, zombie, or ghoul sturge might be here at night. Inside the tower is a special bronze horn of Valhalla in the hand of a bugbear skeleton lying in the corner. The horn is aligned with chaotic evil and will summon only warriors of that alignment. Uh, don't blow that horn. Armed with spears and long swords, these warriors will attack any but chaotic evil individuals when summoned. The bugbears and magician would love to find this treasure naturally since they could use it, but they don't come here because the undead occupy it at all times. The summoned warriors are immune to charm and hold spells. At the gateway, the remains of a battering ram and the old portcullis that fell on top of it. Six skeletons lie in the rubble, one of which is animated. During the day, there's a 10% chance of encountering a bugbear here, not on the roster. A uh, collapsed wall, part of a broken wall that's been smashed by repeated hits from a catapult. Two elven skeletons lie in the rubble. If they're dug up, one will be found to be wearing a pair of boots of elven kind. There's a 15% chance of encountering a bugbear here during the day. Inside of the wall is an animated skeleton that won't attack the bugbears. The catapult. These are the remains of a catapult rotting with age. Amid the rubble is an animated hill giant skeleton. It can be turned like a normal skeleton. It carries 72 electrum and a pouch of gems, uh, 6 times 20 GP in value. Would the DM allow me to use the laser rifle you smuggle in from Expedition to the Barrier Peaks? Um, I mean, if you've got a high enough level character who's been to the Expedition to the Barrier Peaks and you picked up the laser rifle and you've got it and it still works, 
hell yes, you can use it in an adventure. Now, it is big overkill for this module. I, I wouldn't run this module for a group of characters who are powerful enough to have challenged that, that that module is like levels 12 to 14 or 10 to 12. Good Lord, I don't... Now I want to look, because now I want to know. Is it... Let's see. Where is my copy? That's the I module... Oh, hell, I don't remember. But anyway, it is a double-digit level requirement. Eight, is it only 8 to 12? Good Lord. Ah, good, you have it to hand. Yeah, roll on that chart. Roll on that table, <laughs> Tim. Every now, as I recall, you fire this thing this way. Burr. Oh, sorry, sorry, Bob. I'm so sorry. It points this way. It's funny. When I was a kid, I used to think those tables were, tables were horribly complex. Then I saw Gamma World's tables that they were drawn from. Yikes! All right. So Castle Hall. This is the entrance hall. The rich hall. Uh, the castle itself has taken very little damage, save the hole at location. Mm. Uh, the walls and floors are intact and solid. The furniture in the hall is damaged, though it was once apparently of very good quality. A large bar has been added to the outer double doors. The bar is always in place at night. It can be broken by strength at minus 7% from a character's Ben Bars percentage. During the day, a bugbear is 20% likely to be here. Uh, bugbear of any age, I guess, including female. Uh, at night, this location serves as a guard post and is occupied by one to two bugbears. Uh, even young bugbears who are attentive on duty since the magi magician has killed more than one who had been lax. Yow. Uh, Michael, it varied. It varied. I will tell you guys, one of my favorite modules is uh, White Plume Mountain. And um, White Plume Mountain was actually written uh, as a, a resume, basically an example of work shown to Gary. And it, it, it wasn't even complete. It, 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 it the, like the module was supposed to have more to it. Half a moment. The module was supposed to have more to it. And um, uh, Law Schick showed it to Gary like, hey, this is what I can do for dungeon design. And he was like, this is awesome. You're hired. We'll publish this forthwith. And he was like, I didn't intend this to be pub for this to be published. And Gary said, shut up, Law. <laughs> I, I don't think he said shut up, Law. But no, he thought it was wonderful and he thought it should be published. And I, for the longest time, when I was younger, I did not like White Plume Mountain. I grew to love it as an adult. I love White Plume Mountain. I love running it as an event module. I love running it at home in campaigns. White Plume Mountain is really, really, really good. I like it a lot. And Law Schick hit it out of the park, but that's how he got the job. Um, you know, Gary wrote S one, S three, S four, WG four, WG five, WG. Did he do WG six? I don't remember. Um, Morton Kynan's Isle of the Ape. Uh, he did, um, uh, beyond the magic mirror. And Dungeon Land, Keep on the Borderlands, uh, G123, D123, T1, not T1 to 4, 
the one to the 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 T one to four was a workup of Gary's notes by Frank Menser. Yes, Chainmail is is a perfectly cromulent war game. It does it gets the job done. If you asked me, like, what would you prefer to use for mass combat, chainmail or swords and spells? I don't. I've had more experience with chainmail, and I haven't had a lot of experience with chainmail at all. Oh, you don't like the VCR and the six shooters you can find in in uh, in those modules, Ricky? Peace, Slender Dad. Thank you for hanging out with us. Anyway, we're going to do a few more entries here. Uh, it is getting late. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Castle Hall guard post uh, used to be a guard post. Furniture has been removed, and each turn there's a 7% chance of a bugbear wandering. I, these percentage chances are interesting. They're, they're very non -grade. It's not like... 2%, 5%, 10%. Len just kind of throwing those weird percentages in. Oh, and the, the, these were done by Len Lakofka. The A series was uh, Dave Cook. Then um, that was A1. A2 was Tom Moldvay. Uh, A3 was, uh, uh, of course, Alan Hammock. And A4 was Law Schick. And Tom Moldvay. Sleep well and dream of large women. All right, the armory. This room is reinforced with metal bands, also has been wizard locked by the magician. It was once a barracks and weapons room. The remains of six beds are here and six foot lockers. A weapons rack with 12 spears and eight short bows. The weapons are rotted and useless. <clears throat> the lockers have been open and items have been strewn about. It's interesting that it's wizard locked and everything like that. The throne room. This room was once the throne room. Its back wall was disintegrated along with the throne long ago. The bugbear children often play here during the day, watched over by one of the females. The room was decorated by frescoes of men and elves fighting together against bugbears. These paintings have been defaced and partially destroyed. The room's door is barred from the other side, uh, the side in room K, and is always in place at night. The barracks... It's where the bugbears live. Three females and four males. They have no treasure other than the gold carried on their persons. If not on alert, there's an 85% chance of encountering two to seven bugbears at night and a 55% for encountering one to four during the day. And then you have a shaman uh, in area O, O, who has uh, two blocks of incense. The other shaman and his wife live over in room P. Uh, and that shaman has a scroll of spiritual hammer, prayer, detect lie, and tongues. But there is a chest in the room containing his treasure, 240 gold. It's guarded by a glyph of warding placed there by a friendly companion shaman. It will explode for 10 points of explosive damage, affecting everyone in the room, save for half. The king of the Elvis. <laughs> So one of the shamans is doing really well and is is uh, a, a tough fight. The other one, nah, not so much. The pantry. Uh, most of the good food here has long ago been eaten. What remains is mostly iron rations made for bugbear tastes. There are, are few fresh foods. The kitchen is empty. The dining room uh, has been marred and is partially rotted. The chairs are likewise badly marred and damaged. There's a 20% chance of encountering a wandering bugbear uh, the door leading to this room at M is nailed shut and can be opened as per Ben Bars at minus 3% chance. You have a spell question. The magic spell for unlock, knock. It's called knock. And yes, uh, in AD&D, OD&D, basic Dungeons and Dragons, probably 2E, I don't know. Uh, maybe Menser basic. Again, I don't know. Rules Compendium, I don't know. Um, it will always work and it is an area effect spell that trunk the door behind it the secret lid on the throne next to it 
it will open all of them. I don't know how 5e works, so I couldn't tell you. Elvish Presley, Elvish Presley. <clears throat> so pantry, dining room, storage room uh, was formerly a storage room, but is now a lookout post during the day. There's a 70% chance of encountering a bugbear here. The window is closed at night. Children's quarters, um, you know, 65% chance of encountering two to nine of them during the day, 95% of six to nine of them during the night. An adult bugbear will be watching here 65% of the time during the day. The window shutters are closed at night. And finally, Telvar the Magician. We get to his room. The lock holding the demon. Yeah. <clears throat> there, there are intricacies to it, Ricky, but that's just kind of a general overview. Yeah, the cleric who knows uh, detect traps, which runs for like 30 minutes at first level, and the... Um, the uh, magic user who has a couple of knock spells basically make the thief just like the scout. <laughs> okay. So Telvar the magician sleeps and rests in this room. There's a secret door to room one and a trap door leading up to room Z. They are both wizard locked. The windows are barred with steel Ben bars at minus 12 and are shuttered and closed at night. This bedroom has been repaired and refurbished. It contains a large bed, a padded chair, a foot locker, a wardrobe, a four drawer chest, and a portrait of the magician on the wall over the bed. Doesn't think much of himself, does he? The locker contains traveling clothes, none of which are magical. The wardrobe holds four robes and three cloaks, which are also normal clothing. Behind the portrait is a small secret compartment containing a pouch with 47 platinum and 10 gems, seven, 20 GP, uh, seven times 20 GP, and three times 50. Uh, in values. Telvar may be found on any in any of the three rooms, V, W, or Z, of the second and third floor, or he may be in a different part of the ruins altogether. The table below should be consulted to determine his exact location as soon as the party begins exploring this area, rolling a D percent chance. It doesn't prevent fire damage to the door, Gumby, so you could potentially burn the door down, but that would fill a hole with smoke and it would absolutely attract any monsters nearby. What are you guys talking about? A animal companion? Kender? What the hell are you talking about? Speak English! Speak Gygaxian! <laughs> Uh, okay, so the workshop. Um, the door to its wizard locked, a large table with beakers, flasks, and general lab equipment. That That's all glass, by the way, if you're playing Fallout 4. Um, on a series of shelves are 40 bottles and flasks. Eight of them hold magic potions or mixed potions. These eight will radiate magic. The others contain only common chemicals. Um, 16 of them are harmless if and by, but may leave an aftertaste for some hours. Mixing liquids in the stomach is never wise, and if someone is so foolish as to do so, then a mild toxic poison could result. Roll percent D percentage. Uh, 1 to 60 produces no ill effect. 61 to 90, mild poison, say, versus poison, or take 1 to 12 damage. 91 to 100, toxic poison, say, versus poison, or become extremely ill, taking 3 to 18. Uh, the illness will totally incapacitate the character for 2 to 40 turns or until neutralized poison is applied, i.e. not something that anyone in the party that is going to be adventuring in this area will be able to do. 12 are mild poisons and 4 are toxic poisons, the remaining 16 bottles. The 8 magic potions are 
a potion of healing, an extra healing potion mixed with a potion of diminution. A sample will produce noticeable curing, but shrinking effect is only 30% likely to be noticed by the drinker, 15% by another person of the party. If the full potion is imbibed, the curing effect is complete, but diminution will reduce the person to 50% of his or her normal side. Alas, his or her gear will not shrink at all. The shrinking will last for three turns. I guess Len just was saying, well, the hell with potion missability table. A normal potion of hill giant control. A potion of polymorph self cross with a potion of vampire control. This one was a real discovery, but when tested, it will give no indications of its nature other than a good feeling, a warm tingling, or an unexplained desire. <laughs> oh my. When fully imbibed, the figure will become nervous and excitable. He or she will want to do something, but will not know what it is. Caution will not be exercised. The very next living thing the character mentions, however, is what he or she will become. Character classes like magic user, fighter, etc. will not produce any change since profession is not a physical form. The effects last for 2 to 12 days. Objects won't are allowed to save but 12 or better, or they become part of the polymorph unless the altered form is one that wears similar gear under normal circumstances. The polymorph form still has the same mind, but the abilities could be radically changed. If no form is named within 24 hours of the game time, no transformation will occur. A potion of growth, a potion of sweet water, gaseous form crossed with invisibility. <laughs> Saba wants that. Yeah, Mercury, yeah. Uh, let's see. You'll become gaseous and then vanish. Uh, 20 rounds, the invisible wears off and the cloud is visible. Um, and then you remain gaseous for another eight turns. A potion of longevity crossed with a potion of speed. Uh, test sample will produce a craving for the rest unless a save versus poison is made. If the save is successful, the character will talk rapidly for a few minutes, we'll, we'll but will feel terribly robust and hearty. The full potion will cause the character to become five years younger while being able to move at 50% bonus for uh, 30 rounds. Almost said that, that, thought that said 30 years. The character must also, however, suffer two system shock rolls. If either fails, the character takes a total of 2 to 20 points of immediate damage. Oh, north of the Rockies. You're just, you're just, oh, you're, you're trying to, trying to, to, to win your way to my heart. Also hidden in this room in a false back of the writing desk, normal writing equipment, blank scrolls, inks, brushes, etc. will be found in the drawers, is the magician's magic spell book. The false back has a magic mouth that screams, thief, 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 20 times when the back is opened by anyone save Telvar. The book contains the following spells. Um, charm person, detect magic, good, uh, jump, magic missile, protection from good, read magic, identify, sleep, shocking grasp. Um, it doesn't have right. Note that it doesn't have right. Interesting. Second level is darkness, 15 foot radius, ESP, invisibility, levitate, detect invisibility, magic mouth, ray of enfeeblement, and wizard lock. Third level, dispel magic, fireball, gust of wind, fly, protection from normal missiles, feign death, monster summoning one, Leoman's tiny hut. Len, it had better have had one of your spells in it, my friend. Fourth level, Rary's Mnemonic Enhancer, Wizard Eye. Madam, I am attempting to build a mnemonic memory circuit using only stone knives and bear skins. Storeroom. This room contains books, boxes of other magical supplies and papers, spare furniture, and other objects not frequently used or consulted by Telvar. <laughs> Dave hates that hut. He does not like Liam and Steiny hut. The storeroom is empty. The observatory is used by Telvar for astrological observation. It has a ladder to the roof. The trap door at the top is locked and barred. It is reinforced with steel bands and will give way to strength at it with a bend bars minus 8%. Inside the room is a crude but effective telescope. There's a drawing on the table and some maps of the heavens dated on a month-by-month -month basis. Some curious carvings are on the roof, sighted, sighting lines and measurements, uh, for celestial observations. On one wall of the room is a dart board and four darts. The darts can be used as weapon. The magician is trained in them. Uh, 
and the basement of the castle. That's probably where we'll wrap up because we're coming up on 11 o'clock. Um, if any of the skeleton zombies or the skelter or zombie or still exist, they will be in this area. They know of the secret doors connecting AI to AJ and AE. They'll occupy rooms A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, A, I, or A, J. First, roll to see how many, if any, are in room A on ground level. If any remain, disperse them randomly amongst the six named locations with no more than six in one room. This was the first module complex my uh, HE main claimed it for his uh, uh, own after clearing it. I hope he rebuilt it there, Vanger. Oh, nice, Michael. Awesome. Yes, we will look at the map one more time before you go, Alan, since you requested so nicely. And finally, the ghoul lair. The doors to this room are locked so that the above-ground undead do not come in. The wraith does not enter this room. Its guardians are three ghouls and a ghast. They will not attack any who enter uh, from the doors or stairs, but they will not follow anyone out. Thus, they can be bypassed through various means, such as invisibility, turning undead successfully, etc. Three ghouls, with their stats there, a paralyzed individual is 40% likely to then be eaten by the attacking ghoul, inflicting six points of damage per round. Otherwise, the ghoul will enter a new melee. If no new melee opponents are available, it will eat the victim on the spot. The ghouls have no individual treasure. The ghast... Uh, will also eat its victims, but only 20% likely to do so if other op opponents are still present. It carries a set of three darts plus one, but does not use these in battle. Um, they have some treasure taken from victims. Uh, it includes 107 gold, 83 electrum, and a suit of plate armor tailored to a dwarf, a normal shield, a shield plus one, and a potion of clair audience. And then there's the cells. They're old cells in a guard room. There's nothing of value in any of them, just old and rotting furniture. The doors are unlocked and 50% likely to be ajar. Okay, let's take a look at the map again. So here is where we were just talking about, right here. This area, if you guys can see the map swirling it. And we got a secret door going there. Here's the castle. There's the aforementioned caved-in wall. There's a wall with a battering ram. There's the disintegrated wall of Hall M. And so on and etc. So there you go, guys. That's uh, that's where we're going to leave off. Um. And we'll get to the dungeon level. We'll get to the dungeon level next time we deep dive this. Which, you know what? I, I don't want it to be that long. I know you got... Uh, yes, I always roll for Wandering Monster Encounters. Um, but I don't want to leave this for that long. And I know Monday night uh, is kind of open. But if you guys want, we can absolutely... Uh, Monday night, we can absolutely deep dive this some more. It, it won't be it won't be a lot. We might just get through one page, but we can uh, we can uh, uh, definitely deep dive some more. So if you want that, we'll do that. I'll ask you then. But anyway, guys, I want to thank everybody for being here. Big, big, big ups to everybody for the supers. Uh, I got a couple from Venger, one from Slender Dad. I realize he's gone. Mercury. Uh, and Ricky Maru, thank you all very much for your supers. And again, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please do click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon for notifications. If you're watching this later, please leave a comment below and tell me what you think. If you, if, if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down and tell me what you didn't like about it. But until then, everyone, be good to each other. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again soon. We'll see you again soon. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, we're going to play some first edition Gamma World. So don't miss that. And I will see everyone then. Peace. Good night. Have you seen my owl bear?
Here's to all the weirdos everywhere in the woods and in the air. Have you seen my owl bear? Should I shave off all my hair? Bobs are all around. Some live in tunnels underground. Some are fat, some are rich, some are sleeping in a ditch. Can you ride a crooked horse without a saddle way off course? Naked as a toad, all the way to Smoky Joe's. Have you seen the little creep driving fast in his little green jeep? He smells like fish and brandy, but his rotten teeth look dandy. Take me to the show, I don't care if fast or slow. From action flicks to dancing dicks, just take me to the show.